I saw this from Andre Godala a couple days ago after game four of the Western Conference Finals when Steph Curry dropped 37 points. I think he's the second best ever. I've always thought that about him. I knew, but other people didn't know, so I was surprised. Um, I wasn't surprised when he took over the series. That, of course, is Andre Godala. And I believe he was talking about point guards, right? He was not talking about second best player ever, about point guards. Now, it's it's complicated because the position has has changed. And do we do we consider LeBron James a point guard? Do you consider LeBron James a point guard? Because most times in his career, when the game mattered, he brought the ball up to court. Now, he wasn't technically their point guard at times in Cleveland. Kyrie Irving would bring it up. Uh, Mario Chalmers when he was in Miami and uh, and others. But when it mattered, and if you look at how he plays in Golden State, like, look, Draymond brings it up, Iguodala brings it up, Kevin Durant is as much the point guard as Steph Curry is. So do we consider, I I don't want to get into ratings of guys. What Steph Curry has changed is, um, is our thoughts on several things. Body type, I think. He's changed our thoughts on, can your body type withstand the pounding of the NBA when you're up when you're a point guard. You know, you used to have to be a little a little stockier if you're smaller and a little stronger because there was hand checking and obviously the lack of hand checking has really, really helped. Freedom of movement has really, really helped. Steph Curry be Steph Curry. As well as opening up the floor, putting at times five shooters in the floor or picking one roll man. And the volume of three-point shots and the volume of passes for the Golden State Warriors, that all helps Steph Curry because he plays as well without the ball as he does with the ball. In addition to which, he's changed our idea of, hey, you can't be a high turnover guy. Like, he's a high turnover guy. But he's also a high reward guy in terms of the volume of three-point shots and percentage of makes. And the the passing, while, again, it's it's risk reward. There is a lot of reward for a lot of risk. Um. So we've gotten into this discussion as to whether or not he's a transcendent pro, and I would say he is. I would say he is. Gilbert Arenas shot some of, some of the same shots from some of the same distance with less success, less fanfare, and more than anything, fewer wins. So some of it was the surrounding talent around Gilbert plus. Gilbert, while a really smart guy, was, a, you know, the gun thing, obviously, in Washington derailed him. Some of his other personality quirks, he wasn't really bought into winning or to team defense, but he was a ridiculous shooter scorer and had the confidence to withstand lots of misses and then load up with lots of makes. So I don't think that Steph is the first to shoot the, the, the shots that he shoots, but he's the first to make them in... Uh, this level of games with consistency. So between body shot, between body type, he's different position wise than most people that play the position. Uh, the uh, and obviously shooting, some guys shoot going right, some guys shoot going left, some guys are catch and shoot guys. He's all of them. I, I think that's different than anybody. But I also think that there's some replication that we've seen from Damian Lillard. We've seen some some replication from Trey Young. Like Trey Young is a poor man's rookie version of Steph Curry. But what if I told you Draymond Green has had a bigger effect on the change of the NBA? There there's always been those glue guys on great NBA teams. Always. You know, Dennis Rodman was a glue guy in two different or it's actually three different NBA championship teams. People forget when Dennis Rodman was the worm and he was in Detroit, he was the most ridiculously talented defender and rebounder the league had ever seen. He could, like Draymond, guard positions one through five. And then he transformed himself into the best rebounder in the league and was still an incredible defender. But this was at a time in the league in which he didn't really guard centers. He was too small. And he didn't really switch off into guarding point guards. That wasn't how it worked. Of course, did the same thing in San Antonio. And like Dennis, Rod- There's a reason Dennis Rodman's a Hall of Famer, rightfully so. 
What Draymond Green has added is one, an offensive skill, the ability to pass, handle the ball, shoot some, and suddenly his shooting has taken off here in the playoffs. Uh, He's not really a post scorer, but, you know, you can throw it to him down there and he'll be an active passer. But the ability to guard one through five at six foot six and guard these point guards changes everything. You don't need to be put a big stiff out there when you can shut everybody down. You don't need a rim protector when your center can guard the point guard. And oh yeah, by the way, Draymond Green's a pretty good shot blocker. So too is Kevin Durant. It's one of the reasons that they have rim protection even when Looney's not on the floor or Bogut's not on the floor. It's not that point forward hasn't previously existed. It's that point center has not until Draymond Green. And while the league continues to search for more scoring lead guards, we have them. We have a bunch of them. Lillard is different than Harden, is different than Steph, is different than Trey Young, is different than Kemba, is different than Kyrie. All of those guys are not traditional point guards, but point guard-ish who can score, who can pass, who can take over a game offensively. We like to make it out like we haven't seen anything like Steph Curry. It's true, but there are other kind of versions of him which are interesting. There's no other Draymond Green. They tried to make P.J. Tucker into Draymond Green, and he got exposed when the Warriors had to go smaller and had to play kind of their old style. Like he, He looked like a guy who could only really guard Kevin Durant. Whereas Draymond showed the ability in this last series to be able to guard Myers Leonard and Ennis Cantor, as well as Damian Lillard and CJ McCollum. Like we talk so much about Steph and we should, because we are in love with just the way he is, the shots he makes, the pass he makes and the way in which he the bounces around. And I mean, it's, it's an unbelievable thing to watch. And because of Draymond's antics, he usually gets no passes, and rightfully so. But I believe if you watched it with a basketball guy, and if you looked historically, and you're like, when did the league change? When did it go from, you don't need a center anymore? It's when, what is like, the graphs, and they come together. It's when Draymond Green and the Warriors hit. It's when they go like, hey, we don't need Andrew Bogut. We got Draymond. We don't need JaVale McGee. We got Draymond. We don't need DeMarcus Cousins. We got Draymond. I believe that he he has invented a position that has dramatically and will dramatic will continue to change the NBA. More so even than Steph Curry. Because Curry's style has been done before. Usually it was off the bench scores. Bobby Jackson used to score like that. We've seen um, um, Crawford, uh, Jamal Crawford. Look, Steph's a much better player than Jamal Crawford. But it's the same kind of thing where you don't really have your one, your two, whatever. You just come in and get buckets. And Steph can run a team, but he's a bucket getter. And he he gets them... I'm mean, it's bam, bam, bam. Like, whoa, what just, what just happened? And from range and going right and going left, like he's an all time great. This is not me in any way diminishing Steph Curry's offensive prowess, but there are other guys that play in some ways similar to him and have played that similar, maybe to less success. I've never seen a Draymond Green who can play all five positions at both ends of the floor and be effective at all five. 